In today's video, I want to go over a very, very simple concept that I see many people actually get wrong and I want to explain it uh, here in the beginning so you don't have this issue in the future. That is, if you have noticed in the previous lesson, we had, uh, so we had this routine function, which is perfectly fine, but in the main function, we had quite a few, quite a few pthread create lines of code and similarly with pthread join. And as you might notice, this is sort of duplicated code. And if you want more than four threads, I say I want eight threads, um, then I don't want to copy and paste this code again. How can I create threads in a for loop? Well, to start off, uh, we should actually take a look at these variables, p1, p2, p3, and p4. Uh, these two work with them in a for loop would be great for them to be in an array. So we can create an array instead of all this, we can create a, let's say th from thread. And let's say we just want four threads for now. So that's going to be our array where all the uh, thread handles are going to be stored. And then we don't want to initialize the mutex multiple times. So only have that once. And then in a for loop here, let's get an int i i i equals zero i less than well we just have four threads so far and inside of it what do we actually do well i guess we just copy uh part of this right we just go ahead and copy it and we all we have to do really is to change this so that instead of p1 it says the address of th of i or you could say th plus i that is really the same thing Okay, so creating the thread has been taken care of. We are creating four threads using this simple for loop. We can remove these all together, that's fine. So now that we have created the threads, we can just simply call join in the same for loop, right? So if we copy and paste, for example, this one, and well, we format it, and instead of P1 here, we have to give it the actual value. So in this case, we gave it the address to where we are going to store the handle, but here we can just give it the value, which means we just need to say th of i in square brackets. And I can return here too, because we don't need anything else. And that should be that. If we remove all this and we try to execute it, it looks fine, right? So if I try to execute this, we're going to get 40 million as a result. So that's the expected result because what? We have four threads and we have incremented uh, this 40 million times. Looks fine at first glance, but let's print a couple messages and see exactly what's going on. Okay. So uh, after the thread is created, let's print out a simple message on the console saying uh, thread percent D has started. Right. Let's say backslash n, and then I'm gonna give it the i value. And then thread percent d, well, we know that after we return from pthread join, like with the wait calls with processes, we know that the thread has finished its execution. So we can see here thread percent d has finished execution. And I'm gonna still give it the i value here. If I try to run this, you will notice a couple interesting things. And that is that, as you can see, thread zero starts execution, that's fine. Then it finishes execution, but only after it finishes execution, then thread one starts execution and so on and so forth. So at no point do we have more than one thread running at the same time. That's kind of a bummer because we are really doing everything multi-threaded because we want to have things uh, run in parallel. But in this case, we are not. And what's what's the issue? What's, what's up? Why is it that whenever we, only when we finish the execution of a thread, do we get to start the other one? That has to do with the way the for loop works here. Right? It's just our logic that we have created here. We are, well, for the for i equals zero, we are creating the first thread, 
right? And then we are also joining it, right? So the first thread gets created, then it the system waits for that thread to finish its execution using pthread join, and then only then the second thread can start its execution because that's just how the for loop goes. So this is exactly not the way to create uh, threads in a for loop. Okay, so you shouldn't both create or call pthread create and pthread join in the same for loop. That way you're gonna have basically sequential execution. Basically, you're gonna only have one thread executing at a time and that would mean you might as well not even use threads. The correct way of doing it is to create another for loop after you have created all the threads. So another for loop that starts at zero and ends at four. So that's the same exact uh, definition for the for loop here, but we have only the join uh, instruction in it. Now, if I try to run this with the messages themselves, because, well, I'm gonna keep them because this is correct, right? Only after we call pthread create, we have started the thread and only after we call pthread join, we have finished the execution. If you try to launch this, you will notice that all of a sudden things are starting in parallel. So uh, it says four threads have started their execution. So at the same time, all four are firing and then more or less the same time all four are being joined, are being, well, they finish their execution. Okay, so this is the way to actually create uh, a set of threads in a for loop. You have to first create them in a for loop and in, in a separate one, you have to join them. Don't do the same operation in the same loop because then you don't have multi-threaded programming per se. So that if we have a for loop that creates an n number of threads at once, you can optimize it based on your hardware. So my computer has eight CPU cores, so might as well create eight threads at the same time. Not always you have to do this, but in this case, it's a good uh, example. I'm gonna just have to change everything to eight. And if I run this, of course, I'm gonna get eight threads and then eight threads have also finished their execution. And this number is also 80 million, which is the correct result. So, and uh, by the way, this message doesn't really mean that uh, the threads finished their execution in this exact order. This is just the way we print the message, right? We go through a for loop. So first we print this message, then we print the second, then we print the third. Um, the in, in reality, let's say if the fourth thread finish, finishes its execution first, we're gonna first wait for the first thread. So these messages on the terminal correspond to the way we're iterating over the list of threads and we're waiting for them, not really the uh, order in which they finish their execution. And that's all there is to it. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Also, on our website, you're gonna see the source code for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.